Hey gang, it's Brian from FX Billiards. I am here today with Jason, and we today are going to talk about APA rules that we like, don't like, that we would change, um, and just kind of give you guys our feelings about these different rules and and you know how they play out uh, in the real world of the APA and maybe some other leagues as well. Um, Jason, how are you today? I'm good, Brian. Thanks for, again for having me back on. I appreciate it. Always good, a pleasure. Good. You're you're very welcome. And um, this is actually you're you're going to be a lot of help uh, in this video okay. because uh, you're currently playing in the APA, and some of the things that I might get wrong because I haven't really played seriously in the APA for about ten to twelve years or something crazy. Um, so some rules might have even changed, but I doubt it. I'm pretty much in tune with with what they are, but um, I do know, you know, you and I were talking before we started the camera uh, that there was a big rule that you weren't even aware of until recently. I'm, 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 you, you actually uh, had me feeling kind of embarrassed when, uh, when, when I was telling you about it. But, um, and, and it's, it's simply just because that's the way I would want to play, you know? So I, I uh, you know, go, go into that rule if you want to segment right into it is the fact that you don't have to call your shots. I, I really, I mean, I, obviously I knew on the eight ball that you have to call your shot, but I, I thought all your other shots, if you aim for the left corner pocket and it ends up in the right rear pocket or, or whatever, um, it's good. You, you keep playing. <laughs> so um, I, I, I saw somebody do that the other day in the middle of a game and I had to go to the other team and, and question it because my captain, of course, wasn't there. Um, so I, I had a question that I, like, oh yeah, yeah, any pocket goes, I think you had a saying, you know, APA yeah. stands for, what is it again? Any pocket, any time. Any pocket, any time. Yeah. So I was shocked to, to know that. And again, slightly embarrassed, but it was only my third appearance, you know, playing in the APA. So, yeah, well, but, that is the, the number one criticized rule in the APA. The other thing that is interesting about the rule because you know guys always complain about it as their that's their excuse for not playing an APA. It very rarely happens. It's Think about true. it. If, yeah, if, if you played yeah, three if, weeks and saw it happen once, I did. I did only see it yeah. happen once. Yeah. So right, and people run around complaining about it like you know every other shot somebody's making a lucky ball. No. Not, 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 not only that, but for the most part, if you lost the game, it's it's not because the guy made that one lucky shot. Exactly. For the most part, you know, yeah. Hey, does it happen? Yes. Can it happen? Yes. But that 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 would not be the norm. I I, I would say so. Yeah, and I I was telling you earlier um, on Monday, I played with a student. We played twenty eight games, and we we played on a nine foot table. He's an APA four, and. I think on one occasion, 28 games, on one occasion, somebody made a ball that wasn't planned in 28 games with an APA four. Were you playing APA rules or? We play, we always play APA rules oh, okay. because he plays in the APA and I want him to play under his, Ascension. his rules. Okay. Yeah. Right. So I don't pick up jump cues. I mean, you know, if he D's me up and I want my jump, cue, I don't pick it up. Um, but we, we call the eight ball, but 99.95% of the shots in all of these games combined, there was one. And I think, I actually think I did it because I looked at him and said, go ahead and shoot. <laughs> and, oh, I had a foul. This is funny. I've, um, when I was a kid and I was playing on bar boxes and me and my best friend, we only had you know, three motivations in our life. And that was playing basketball, girls and pool. So we spent a lot of time talking about those three things. And um, we had this thing where if, if you, when you're during your warm up stroke, you accidentally touch the cue ball, keep shooting. Mm -hmm. Not because you're trying to deceive anybody because every, it's pretty obvious when that happens. But once the ball goes in the pocket, most people would not put a dollar in the bar box to take your ball out. So right. I actually had a foul because I put the extension. We're on a nine foot table. I put the extension on my cue 
which is when I always foul, by the way, because now my cue that's been the same length my entire life is now six to eight inches longer. Right. <laughs> so, so I'm doing my warm up strokes. My hand is all the way at the end of the of the extension. And I hit the cue ball by mistake and just naturally. I've been doing it for so many years. Right. So I naturally just shot the ball in the pocket. I told him, take the ball out and spot it. You know, and I explained this whole, you know, thing going back to when I was you know, 17 Good. years old and, and stuff like that. Um, so I had that foul. And I also, I, I took a bank shot or something that went in the wrong pocket. I said, just take it out of pocket and, instead of me continuing to shoot. Um, and of course, you know, he pays me for lessons, so I really should be nice, nicer to him. <laughs> so, but, but nevertheless, um, yeah, I made the foul. Usually the lower ranked players are the ones that are going to, of course, make the ball by mistake. And, and guys that use that as a complaint, um, it's, it's just silly. I, I actually heard a guy on, a, on another channel, um, talking about APA rules and how people complain about that. And, and, and the, the YouTuber that was on that channel actually made a very good point. He said, if you don't like the, um, the APA rules, then you don't like nine ball because that's the game. That's the way nine balls, but you don't like professional nine ball then. It's true. Now, which, you know, anyway, most common, most important rule in APA is you yeah. hit your ball first. It, whatever happens after that goes, but it, it Trust me, guys are not winning games left and right because they they hit the wrong. Because ball. of that rule, yeah. yeah, yeah. Anything off the top of your head, other than yeah. that, which the, is a biggie. The, the the break, right? So okay. if, if if you break and you, know, you get one low ball in, but all oh. of a sudden you, you you see the layout of the uh, of the high balls and you're like, this is the layout I want. You can't do it. Yeah. Right. You you you, ha you have to follow the the, the, the low ball. Right. That's that 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 one bothers me more than the other one, to be honest. Um, yeah. But um, you yeah, get that, penalized. That, that, that's the one that sticks out. You get penalized for making a ball. Um, one of my on on the break, if uh, you know. One of my favorite pool stories, and it happened so long ago that I'm sure I screw it up a little bit, but I'll tell it the way I remember it. <laughs> I was in the APA, and I broke. And I, I want to say five, but it may have been four balls of the same suit went in on my break. Like the best break I ever had in eight ball in any kind of competition, five balls went in. So I could be right. merging, honestly, merging my stories together. But the way I remember it, I, I know I made four of the same suit at least. It might have been five. And, you know, of course, I was a seven. I'm playing a three. And I lost the game after making this tremendous break because, of course, I've only got three balls left on the table. And, I, and it was a girl, and she's got seven that are blocking my three that I could get to. And they were just in bad positions. I honestly would have run the other balls if I had choice. But because I was stuck on these three, and I think they were clustered, something happened and I couldn't get out. But, um, but yeah, you can make four balls of the same suit and, and not continue to be able to shoot because... Well, but yeah, but mo mo most people would never even want to look at the other suit if you just made four balls. Um, Low-ranked players would not. Yeah. Uh, well, Advanced like said, players... You, 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 you were playing yeah. with a three, so... Yeah, well, the odds, this is, the odds she was going to run out on you was, was probably going to be tough too. <laughs> but she did not run out, but I just Brian. could not, I could not finish the rack uh, for one reason or another. I probably scratched on an eight ball or, or did something stupid. I just remember I lost the game. But um, I'm glad you mentioned that, though, because I like to talk about mindsets. I think you and I were looking at a, a shot earlier, and I was like, well, that's a, you know, that's a low rank mindset. You don't want to think that way. Um, advanced players don't look at the table as balls they have yeah. to make. Right. They look at them as a pattern of balls they're going to make to get to the eight ball. So the mindset is not 
There's right. I, I have never picked a rack in, a, in an open game where I could pick either. I have never picked a rack based on which had the least amount of balls. Right. In fact, one of our little um, flim flams when we were in our teens was to get to the point of the game where the other guy was down to two balls and we had five or six or, or you know, vice versa. And we would tell him, I'll take your balls and you take mine. You only, you know, I only have two. And then we'd run out because everything is laid out for us. Um, another one that was very common, it was so common they used it in a movie in Pooh Hall Junkies. Um, the, the shark said, I'll take five of your balls off the table after the break. So having fewer balls, that's a good thing if you're a three, maybe a right. four. But everybody else is like, no, that's my route. Right. That's that, that's your pattern. Yeah. yeah. Eight ball is my is my mission. That's these are just my little you know, obstacles. Well, exactly. Not even obstacles. My stepping right. stones. And and let me qualify a couple things, guys. Um, I think the APA is outstanding. I think um, it's great, and I played in it, and I encourage people all the time to play in it. I think half of my students that are in the U.S are playing in the APA and I encourage people to play in the APA. I probably encouraged you, Jason, at some point to play in it. Um, but there are some things that, you know, we would change, some things we would change about everything. Um, our own households, you know, we still love everybody, but <laughs> certain things that might change. Anyway. <laughs> I mean, no, it, listen, I, I've, I've done it for, for three weeks now. It's been great. I mean, just, you know, we had, we had spoken about this in previous podcasts, just being able to meet new people and play new players um, yeah. is, is one of the main reasons why I had joined the, um, the APA. So that like in three weeks I already met, met a good five or six people that, that, you know, we've gone out to play even a couple of times. So in, in mm -hmm. that sense by itself, um, that anybody who's on the fence about joining the APA or don't worry about the couple of rules that we're talking about. We're just talking just right. about things that in a perfect world we would change. But overall, yeah. like you mentioned, it's, it's, it's highly recommended to play in it. So. Right. And a little later in this podcast, I will explain why certain rules exist that might seem crazy to some people. We also talked earlier uh, about the um, stalemate rule. Yeah, I, I, I heard of it, but I, uh, until you explained how... Um, you could find yourself in that position. I never even thought that I, I'm never going to find myself in that position, but the example you gave, yeah, I, I could definitely see it. So. Yeah. And for those of you that don't know what a stalemate is, it means no one wins. And I know that in a lot of parts of the world, because guys tell me all the time, Oh, you shot a carom off of that strike ball in your video. And where I play, we can't touch our opponents. You got things like that. Um, <laughs> One rule, and I know I'm going to screw this up, but this is how wacky it was. I, I'm not going to make it more wacky than it actually was. And I think it was in Australia or it was in um, Great Britain. It was, it, was, it was somewhere where they had really cool accents. Um, <laughs> the, the, um, the rule was if you made your opponent's ball, he got to shoot twice. And I said, well, what does twice mean? It means he could shoot and miss. And, and then keep shooting. And I said, I win. If I get to miss in a game of eight ball, a free shot, I'm just going to break up my clusters and run out on you on the next free shot. Like, that's the craziest rule I've ever heard. Ever. And, right. and it happened because you made your opponent's ball. And um, yeah, so if I'm getting that wrong, I will edit this. And, 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 but that's the way I remember this, this one guy. And I think it was in Australia. Okay. Um, but yeah, that's, that's a, a wacky rule. So anyway, I'm, stalemate I'm means nobody wins. I'm sorry. What was that? No, I'm glad we don't play that way. <laughs> I, why I might not play pool today. If that was anyway, it, yeah. it doesn't happen that often, how often, but so a stalemate means no one wins because of, um, the situation on the table. So here was the, the example that uh, Jason and I talked about. Imagine you're on the eight ball, your opponent is on the six ball and the balls are clustered and they're on the short rail. Actually, if you look behind Jason. Uh, yeah, I was, I was gonna say, you could actually see it. You can actually table, see uh, them. As, 
so as yeah. we were talking about it so right. it, it might it might put a little more perspective as to what we're saying so yeah 